Power Pack has a quite interesting history. It first debuted in 1984 under the pen of Louis Simonson and artwork by June Brigman. The kids were given powers by a dying alien horse guy. 12-year-old Alex Power got the power to alter gravity, though it was rather limited to things he could touch or himself. I choose to believe that Uraraka was inspired by him. Ten-year-old Julie Power could now fly at high speeds and left behind a rainbow trail. Insert rainbow dash joke here. Eight-year-old Jack Power could now turn into a cloud. Okay, it's him altering his density so that he can become as small as a mouse or as large as a cloud, but let's be honest, he's a glorified fart joke waiting to happen. And five-year-old Katie gets energy powers because the five-year-old gets to be the deadliest and most offensive character while still being the five-year-old. However, there was one other character who was part of the power pack that debuted in issue 17, Franklin Richards who is among the most frustrating characters to write in all of comics. Ever since his debut in 1968, his defined power set has always been vague but stupid powerful, going all the way up to beating Mephisto in his own realm and creating small universes. And he would be among those who would help recreate the multiverse after it died in a puddle of its own blood. Needless to say, his power set here is basically astral projection and dreaming up prophecies. If he was too powerful, there would be no dramatic tension in this book. His history with the power pack felt like him being an actual character for once, rather than just being a plot device or a glorified damsel in distress. So, what's he like in the All Ages series, a book that takes place in a completely different universe made to be more accessible to children? Let's get started on Fantastic Four and Power Pack. After saving a guy and having a discussion about secret identities, we get to see Public School 616. Get it? Because that's the mainline Marvel Universe. Jack is the center of attention in his class, only for Franklin Richards to show up and basically steal his thunder, as a kid who basically skipped a bunch of grades. And with that, the heir to the Fantastic Four makes Jack overdramatic, moody, and obsessed with getting revenge. <laughs> that escalated quickly. But when he sees Cole Whitman mock Franklin over his lack of powers and basically being a, a baby of the bunch, Jack decides to humiliate Cole and his friend. We see Jack warm up to Franklin a bit more, and even invites him to go rollerblading with his siblings. I do like the small moments of characterization in the Power family, where Jack is the only one who seems to consider Franklin's feelings, because Franklin isn't exactly happy to basically be celebrity gossip central. Oh, and if you haven't noticed, Cole Whitman was the name of a boy mocking Franklin. Cole Whitman, in Earth-616, was the daughter of Bentley Whitman, a.k.a. the Fantastic Four villain, The Wizard. That's the case here, except Cole is a guy rather than a girl in this universe. And like all terrible parents, Cole is able to break into his father's armory with ease. But, as Julie puts it, they're very ineffective in combat because, let's face it, they will only pick on those beneath them, not above. Second rule of gun safety, don't point at anything you're unwilling to shoot. Fourth rule of gun safety, be sure to know what's beyond your targets. Seriously, these guys are idiots. Good thing they're not the main antagonist of this book. So apparently the wizard called the Fantastic Four, who end the fight because the wizard noticed his weapons went missing. And because these are armed thugs, they're not exactly hard to beat. And then, strangely, in the next scene, Alex is a jerk when they talk about the power pack to the Fantastic Four, calling Jack a reserve member. Yes, he at some point wanted to uh, reveal their identities, and Alex is obsessed with identity protection, Calling him a reserve member is a bit much. Also, this argument is within earshot of the Fantastic Four. So, what the hell? Don't fight in front of the superheroes, it makes you look bad. We also get confirmation that Valeria Richards doesn't exist in this universe because Reed refers to Franklin as an only child. Though, the first hint should have been, Franklin is the genius in this universe, so clearly there's no niche for Valeria to occupy. This does draw upon the original where Franklin was an only child, Valeria didn't exist at the time, and was depicted as a rather lonely one. So Jack's bright idea is to run away with Franklin after being called a reserve member, and Franklin basically just goes along with it. 
In more Alex is a control freak news, we see him actively preventing Julie from telling their parents about the whole Jack ran away with the Fantastic Four boy thing. Because Jack is like 10 in this, and this was written in the early 2000s, we see he hasn't learned of the art of clearing his browser history. What's Reed's method of finding out where his son is? Radioactive nanomachines. Susan, I think you speak for all of us. You mean you injected our son with foreign radioactive substance without consulting me? Anyways, the kids managed to intercept Jack because, let's face it, Jack is a 10-year-old idiot. However, they are interrupted by Doom's hired muscle, Craven the Hunter. Oh, and Doctor Doom only has 129 plans to destroy Reed Richards. I'm unimpressed. Only 129 plans to destroy your arch nemesis? Come on, Victor, do better. Craven does get Franklin, but Jack and Katie are brought along for the ride. After some sibling banter where Jack provokes Katie, we see Katie blast a hole in the bubble, which allows Jack and Katie to escape. Well, Jack escapes. Katie is about to become street pizza. Jack goes on about the brilliance of his escape plan. I would point out that Jack made more problems than solutions, like not nabbing Franklin, but Alex does that for me. He also has the bright idea to say, at least we're out of trouble. Dude, you're a superhero and you're in the spandex. Clearly, you're going to summon trouble that way. Let it be known that Jack Power is a smooth brain. The Fantastic Four visit Margaret and Jim Power, and, uh, this is where they really should have found out that their kids are of a power pack, but, uh, they don't. More on that a bit later. Doom also sends his hostage message. Remember that woman Doom was talking about when he was monologuing his whole I have 129 plans to destroy Reed Richards thing? Yeah, that woman has plot relevance. And if you went further back and read the screen, Katie has a friend in Latveria. We see the biographer lady is Maja's, Katie's friend, mother. And like how there are guided tours of the White House, there are guided tours of Doom's castle in Latveria, and Maja's mother lets them sneak through, using the tour as a massive front. Doom, meanwhile, is talking Franklin into being his heir. If it sounds really out of character for Doom to let anyone but him rule Latveria, much less destroy the Fantastic Four, congrats. You figured out that Doom laced the drink he's been giving Franklin with a potion to swap their minds. Meanwhile, Doom fell into a coma because he let the Fantastic Four, not even the Fantastic Four, the Power Pack beat him. The Power Pack, meanwhile, are currently in hot water over their trip upstate, but not to Latveria. Okay, this is what frustrates me about this book, and I'll get to it later. The Power Parents don't exactly figure out their children are superheroes, but they didn't in the original series either, but we'll get to this eventually. Jack, meanwhile, decides to float off to the Baxter building and not home. Meanwhile, Doctor Doom has been using the mind control chips he built in order to make sure he controls the Fantastic Four so that they cause so much chaos that they basically ruin their own reputations without the public knowing about the mind control thing. It's a solid plan, only for the power pack to crash it. During the fight with the Fantastic Four, Jack manages to remove one of the mind controlled chips and plants it on Franklin. Franklin's explanation as to why he and Doom swapped bodies again is, a uh, Putting a servo disc on my neck meant I controlled myself. You created a logical paradox that short-circuited the disc and returned me to my body. I'm with Jack on this. I made a logical what now? Of course, don't you know anything about science? I didn't mention this earlier, but Reed dragged Doom's body back to the Baxter building so that they can keep an eye on him and, if need be, just launch him into the negative zone. So, Franklin orders the power pack around because he's really the brains behind the operation, and they throw Doctor Doom into the negative zone, where he dies. I'd refuse to believe that Franklin didn't order them to kill him. Mainly because, since he's a composite character of Valeria, I see Valeria playing the Lethal Force game a lot more at Franklin's age, so I say they killed him. Franklin is inducted into the power pack, 
and we see that the Fantastic Four discuss their regrets about going public with their identities. And Julie basically runs over to Alex and tells him not to tell the parents about their identities as heroes, and Alex ends up taking the blame for the Power Pack's antics. The end. In terms of story, I think it's a fun version of Franklin becoming a member of the Power Pack. I do like how miserable he looks whenever he's talking about being the celebrity son, and the artwork does a great job of conveying how he truly wants to feel normal. His friendship with Jack is cute and charming, and having him be the one to outwit Doom is satisfying. However, there's a few problems with the story. Alex is a bit of a control freak to his siblings, and it gets grating. I think he's probably the reason why the original series and this version of Power Pack always have problems internally and can't just really vent to anyone else. There's not much in the way of an extended supporting cast that would help the venting and the bleed-off. Though credit is where credit is due, Alex does end up taking the blame for his siblings' actions and his own, even though it's a lie, but I don't think real-life control freaks would actually admit to mistakes, much less make up lies to protect other people, unless it was helping their own skin as well. But there's a few bigger problems with this story. The underlying conflict is whether or not to go public with your superhero identity. However, the problem becomes apparent when you see how this book tries to conflate such issues. The book is wanting to conflate going public with your identity and revealing it to close relatives. The book says basically revealing your identity to your parents and going public is the same thing, or at least morally comparable, and Alex is basically lying to his parents. It's quite bad, and it's not the moral that they want to preach. Also, Jim and Margaret don't exactly figure it out that their children are the power pack. Well. Where exactly do Franklin and the Power Pack go on from here? Franklin would accompany them on several more adventures. One such adventure is Power Pack Day 1, which really isn't him accompanying them on an adventure. This is basically him being the audience to Alex, Julie, Jack, and Katie telling their origin story. Meanwhile, in Skrulls vs. Power Pack, we actually do see him in action. His fighting style consists of him using various gadgets he or Reed or both of them invented together in order to fight villains, the Skrulls. And then we get a bizarre time travel adventure in Wolverine and the Power Pack with him and young Logan and Jack. Huh? After Thorn the Warriors 4 became the last Power Pack comics, what happened next? It was the all-ages Power Pack comics that gave the artist Gurihiru Studios their first major foray into the Western comics audience. And they would later lend their talents back to Marvel for It's Jeff and assorted series like Gwenpool, Avatar, The Last Airbender for their comics, and Superman Smashes the Clan. Gurihiru Studios would eventually return to Power Pack in 2019, doing the artwork for 616's Power Pack comic Grow Up, at least half of it, there are two stories within it. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please consider liking, subscribing, and tipping the channel on Kofi. This is Cyril signing off.